Everybody comfortable? Yeah. Get your ass up when I'm talking. Hey, take it easy. It's showtime. It's showtime. Yeah. Feel the magic and soul of the YB. All righty, it is time for that Davis show, breaking down you some sports and a little bit of left. Uh, we definitely got some stuff to get into. Uh, it's old now, but that Bears Thursday night game, that victory against the Tampa Bay uh, Buccaneers and how we didn't see that necessarily coming. So we definitely got to talk about that and the, the great play of the Bears defense. Uh, definitely that game recently. Um, definitely Ricky Renteria being or mutually deciding to part ways with the White Sox the same. My ass. The same for Sox pitching coach Don Cooper. Uh, we got to definitely jump in and that and preview the Bears' upcoming game against the Teddy Bridgewater Carolina Panthers. Um, but, yeah, we got a lot. We got we got off top. We got up for grabs. Uh, we got Dak Prescott getting injured, and I think that's going to be my first thing that I'm coming with you at. My name is Kenneth Davis. I am the host of That Davis Show. And, of course, I can't do this without the executive producer, Ryan Bukovetsky. Follow him at Ryan B. Ski and on Instagram at Ryan B. Ski 1. All right, let's go for grabs, Ryan. You mean off top? All right, let's go off top, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, off top. Get the, uh, get the uh, edits out of the way before right. we go to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, off yeah. top. Maybe we'll change it from, like, taking from the tippy. Listen, maybe we'll change it from tech. But see, that this other thing, we can drop in this audio. It's this, uh, it's from this old Red Man Method Man song. And it's like, mm. taking it from the tippy, the top. Oh, my. And we can just put that little part in there or whatever. Okay. Short, I don't know. I don't think we have to worry about it. It's not 30 seconds. And that way, I won't confuse up for grabs and off top. Taking it from the top. Tippy. Tippy. Sing it, daddy. That's it. <laughs> that's perfect. It. That's right. Perfect. That's it. And then we'll just call the taking it taking it from the top or the tippy, but that way it won't be up for anything. And I'll, I'll be less likely to say use uh up for grabs from off top. But yeah, getting rid of off top. You know, taking it from the top or taking it from the tippy. Even though taking it from the tippy seems kind of uh like a dual entendre, a double entendre rather. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I don't know about that. Well, it's it's official, so we're good. I like it. Stop the share. All right. So anyway, let's take from the top to tippy. <laughs> <laughs> From the tippy top. The tippy, the tippy, the top. Um, listen, the thing that I want to do with off top was talk about the Dak Prescott injury uh, this Sunday. Um, that one really got to me, and I'm not the biggest Dak fan. And it's not about me, even though I selected him for my fantasy team because I figured, regardless of how bad the Cowboys were going to be, he was going to score some points. And um, he was. But again, that's unimportant when you're talking about the uh, horrific injury that he suffered, suffered from that compound fracture uh, to his ankle and dislocation. Um, while watching it, I remember thinking to myself, man, but Dak, just go down because he had already – eluded at least two two uh two defenders but definitely one before the tackler got to him and it's one of those things with the quarterback sometimes it's like all right now nah, i'm not saying by any means i was sure he was going to get hurt but still just one of those things i think with any quarterback you start to get worried and you're like man just watch out watch out i saw him when he was tackled i think after maybe been watching it with me and i said whoa he they, he broke his leg and she's like no nah. and this was before they showed the close-up right but it's like I, I saw what looked like a bone. I thought he I thought he got a compound fracture because his fibula did this, is what oh. I thought, looking at the sock, right? But he got it because this is if this is his foot, his the fibula and this is the ankle did did this. It's why he got it, basically. The foot went this way, the bone, it was basically like this. The bone was the at the bottom now, you could say. Mm. You know, and uh you think about now. I, I hate to bring up the financials. But you just think about the fact of how much money he may have lost, and also I, the first thing I was telling her was the fact that you know he had come out and he had talked about depression and how his one of his brothers killed himself this year, had committed suicide, I should say, committed suicide this year, and that that had put him into a depression. 
and I, I've mentioned on the show before, his mother is um, his mother passed, and that's why on his Campbell Soup commercial, if you can remember, it's his two brothers instead of his mother, like we usually see with NFL, uh, NFL players doing Campbell Soup commercials. So that being someone that's already been through a lot, the last thing I wanted to see in these thoughts start running through my head: Man, this kid's gonna be depressed. I hope his brother, his his, his brother that's here, which they, they they showed you that that shot that he took in the hospital with his brother. Um, I'm like, I hope they can can help him through this because this is a lot. I mean, he's probably still gonna get paid, but he basically left a hundred million dollars on the table, and it has to run through your head when you're banking on yourself. And Dak is looking at it like, you know what? French asked me twice. I'm gonna get seventy percent of that hundred mil. Right. And then someone's going to sign me if you don't sign me. So I, and I'm probably going to get a guaranteed of 100 mil. So I'm going to be in three years. I'll have one hundred and seventy million dollars of guaranteed money in the NFL, you know, the Kirk, the Kirk cousin way. Um, but again, I just hope that um, the circulation in that foot moving forward, um, that's his plant foot. So that's a concern, too, as far as this, his strength uh, with, with throwing the ball downfield vertically um, and just mentally and spiritually. Um, I just, for somebody that's been through a lot like that, I hated that to happen to him. Like I, I didn't even want to watch football for the rest of the day, you know, and this was unfortunately, and it was one of those good days where the bears weren't playing. So I could actually use my red zone and enjoy the whole entire bevy of NFL games. And then, man, I, I hate to say it cause it's not about me, but it came back to Biden because it just, man, it, it just put sports into perspective. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's a game and it's this, this, this. And yeah, he's not dead. So I mean, he'll he'll heal from this. But still, man, that's something that mentally, that's gonna be hard to come back from and be yourself. I, I think I mentioned on here, you know, I mentioned on Sean and Maya about um, uh, Danny Trevathan and how I compare Danny Trevathan. Perhaps I suggested that's what I should say, and it's my opinion that yes, Danny Trevathan may have finally, Father Sean may have caught up to him. But I wonder after injuring himself. In, in, a, in a grotesque manner with, with that arm last year, if he's slowing down, like I've been, I remember the first accident I got into, a friend of mine, she said, you know, you're stopping and slowing down at every uh, intersection, even when they're green lights. And it's because when I got into an accident, I was going across 101st and Ewan, and a car on Ewan just went through the red light, and I T-boned that car in high school. Um, and it, it took me a minute. Uh, anytime I've been in an accident, I have never gotten a ticket. I've never caused an accident. Anytime I've been in an accident, it would take it usually take me a second to readjust uh, to um, to being back out there and kind of just I don't want to say being carefree because I'm a safe driver, but to get back to myself is what I should say. And that's what I mean about Dak. I hope that he is going to be easy for him to get past all of this and get back to being that that bottom of the top ten maybe number 11th quarterback, which is was really good. Uh, not in the rarest air, but he's in, He's definitely in a pretty good bunch. Um, I, I just, man, all my, my heartfelt wishes uh, with that young man, uh, such a turbulent time. And to see the tears in his eyes, as you know, he's thinking about everything. I mean, I'm not even just saying the money. I'm just saying, like, for him this year, like, we, like for instance, I lost somebody during COVID. I mean, I lost my brother. You know what I'm saying? During this, now, not, maybe he, my brother didn't pass from COVID. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was battling uh, cancer, cancer, so it could have been complications. Um, but still, I'm, I'm putting on that. Every, like, for instance, Ryan, you this year. Was that last year? I believe it was last year you lost your grandma. Was it this year or last year you lost your grandma? This year. All right. So your loss, but compound that with what's been going on with the world to where you kind of feel like it, it's, it's the world ganging up on me. And that's the kind of the vein I'm putting it with Dak, where even if you didn't lose somebody this year, you still feel like, man, this is a crazy year. And what, what can happen next? And for Dak to sit there and lose his brother and not to be, be able to really be around his teammates because of COVID and, you know, your other brothers, you know what I'm saying? You don't have your mother. I don't, I don't think, I don't know if he has any information about his father, but he hasn't been prevalent as far as I can see in his life. Um, I just thought about that all coming to him right there on that cart, like, damn it, what can happen to me next? You know what I'm saying? And that compounding that with the fact that, you know, regardless of we don't know the exact contract details and we know that it seems like what we heard was Dak wanted basically a four-year deal to get back out uh, for the new TV money. But there was a deal proposed um, that he didn't have that 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 contract in his back pocket. Uh, just like Tariq Cohen. Uh, man, Tariq Cohen's injury feels a lot better knowing that man got some security. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. It does. It feels a lot better. 
So that's the thing where it kind of is like, damn, and he doesn't even have the security. And we could all say hindsight being 2020, but how many times has that something like that happened to somebody, let alone a guy franchise tag, but period, you know what I'm saying? And then that fell on top of that, a quarterback. I mean, the last quarter, the last terrible quarterback injury was Alex Smith, who did return to the to the NFL field this past weekend. Um, I don't. I would say probably after that was like really before we. I know you weren't even born, but I wasn't watching TV. I mean, football. Joe Theismann with Lawrence Taylor. Oh. Yeah. Like I can't think of quarter. I'm talking about quarterbacks. I can't think of. I mean, because we've seen quarterbacks be blow like Brady. Well, uh, we did Brady. see uh, the Bears a couple times take down uh, Brett Favre and. Uh, Aaron Rodgers with some season-long injuries where yeah, it was just but, like, dang. But it wasn't grotesque is the point. Yes, it's, that's true. Like, we see, like, I was just the Carson Palmer. Maybe the Brett Favre one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was just bam. Like, like frozen field. Here's Corey Wooten, Northwestern, yeah. 300 see, on you. I'm going to retire you on that one. But, yeah, but he didn't break a – he didn't have a compound fracture. You know what I'm saying? That we know and if everybody didn't know his compound fracture, I mean the bone is popping out. All right. So uh, we don't know if all of his spine loads were popping yeah, out at that point. Please, Brett Favre. Maybe. Had, uh, yeah, so he was hopped up on so much juice right there, but no. Uh, but yeah, that that's definitely uh I want to get that off my chest on the tippy. On the top. <laughs> on the top. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna work. <laughs> but uh yeah, I definitely want to get that off my chest. Uh next, uh this one will be brief because it's not as important, even though this is someone's career. Uh, oh, perfect. Off top. <laughs> Off top. <laughs> uh, Dwayne Haskins, the uh, young quarterback, uh, drafted last year by the Washington football team. There are rumors that basically Ron Rivera wants to trade the young man. Uh, basically now. For what? Uh, who, maybe he's going to get a second or third round, or probably a third round because you're, you're putting salt in the water. Um, as far as you, 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 you have, you're not attracting anybody by telling them this kid isn't prepared. Now I'll say this. I do believe there's some immaturity issues with Dwayne Haskins. And I thought that from, I thought that from uh, Ohio state really draft night. And some of the things he said where it was just like, shut up, oh, slow down. <laughs> just, yeah. And you had the incident where they were, he, he had driven the team down the field and they needed him to come back out, and he was slapping fans' hands, all right, in the stands. Yeah. And they had to send another kid. Yeah, like, there's some mental blips with this kid, and to a certain degree, you don't need that at the QB position, but we still know he has the tools as far as the arm ability to really figure it out. Um, But it's going to take somebody that's dedicated to him, but it's just wild crazy uh, that Ron Rivera's like, nah, this isn't going to work, and I'm not about to even waste my time with this. I mean – I think most of us, you know, with Riverboat Ron, especially him being a former Bear and also being a, a coordinator and being a, a quality control guy and working his way up through, uh, I believe, Dave Wonstead's uh, Bears regime, uh, we have an affinity for, for Ron Rivera. So I don't think this is like a, a diss from Ron Rivera to the kid as much as you better, you need to wake your ass up and get on the road because I'm going to play these duds. And I'm not, I hate to say that about Alex Smith, but definitely he's past his prime and coming off of a horrific injury. And uh, Keenan Allen, Kellen Allen, whatever the Allen they got up there. Kyle Allen, I believe. Yeah, we gonna kick. We gonna call him Keenan for the time being until he earns that Kyle. There's only one Kyle I know, and that's Kyle Means. But uh, or Super. Well, Kyle. you can't go Keenan Allen. That's the receiver from the Chargers. They are disrespecting him now. I can't go. Ke- I can't go Keenan Allen because uh, well, no, that would be Ke- Keenan Ivory. Be- but listen, I can't go Keenan Allen. <laughs> because I'm, I'm disrespecting Keenan Ivory Waynes. It's too close. But, uh, yeah, so it's still to see that Dwayne Haskins uh, perhaps hasn't figured it out, and um, especially when you got a new guy coming in there, it's time to really batten down the hashes and get it done because you don't want to end up like Josh Rosen. Josh Rosen is still out here looking for a home. You know what I'm saying? Like, hello. I was reading the article right. the other day about uh, teams that need a quarterback and how, you know, maybe somebody was like, maybe you don't try Josh Rosen. It's like, boy, Josh Rosen has got the, 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 the itty hand of the stick. Uh, to say the least. And you don't want to be out here, especially with these quarterbacks that are coming out of college like this, because, I mean, look at Josh Rosen with the fact that Tua, not Tua, with, uh, with uh, um, Kyler Murray, and it was just like, shorty, you got to go. They just, they just drafted a quarterback. <laughs> <laughs> you know what Josh Rosen reminds me of? He's like that dude coming out of the airport with the super common name, so everybody's oh, yeah, open up the little signs. signs and he, like, 
he can't get his limo from anybody. Is that uh, is that Josh Ro- that Josh Rosen or what Josh Rosen? <laughs> like the, the, they're like, no, I want the one from uh, the Cardinals. Josh Rosen, like this one is from Miami. It was like, no, not that Josh. Rosen. Like uh, he just can't get a ride. Can't hitch one to a quarterback yeah. to or to a coach. Anybody that can maybe get him some success. It's just we've had enough of Josh Rosen as soon as he steps in the door. Yeah, so Dwayne Haskins, man, I hope I hope this isn't um I hope this isn't one of those swan songs where we'd be like, man, remember Shotty? And you're not like the next, and I'm definitely using this because he's black and you're black. Uh, racism. The next Gino Oriyama. <laughs> not Gino Oriyama, Gino Smith is what I meant to say. <laughs> Nothing. You, you a get building a, a women's basketball <laughs> <That's> dynasty <right. laughs> on a football field. <laughs> Tarazi three. <laughs> wow, that's a pretty good career. Didn't make it in football. I just built the greatest women's basketball team of all time. Yeah, but that's that's off uh, for me taking off the top. You know what I was just thinking though, real quick. With Go ahead. You compare Dwayne and Josh Allen. The league's kind of shifting towards you. Got to be able to run and throw unless you are just deadly accurate killing from the pot like you just get it out of your hand quick because of your decision making and super accurate and that is not josh rosen's strength or but dwayne haskell but you know what going along with what you're saying too you may not have to be like lamar jackson right you, you still got to be like daniel jones as far as movability like you can't be, yeah you can't be uh you can't be uh tom brady like, who's t- what are these young quarterbacks out right now that are Tom Brady esque? Was like, man, I can't do nothing with my feet. Right. Like, it's just, you have to be able to move around in the pocket and get a yard or two and evade because those defenders are coming. To and to give you maybe a props to one of your guys, Gardner, you know, he's playing well for one of the younger quarterbacks. He's not at all with his legs. It's all deadly accuracy. That's mm. his skill and reading a defense. If you can't do that, good luck if you don't can't run, if that's right. not a part of your game. But even he can get away. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, he sometimes got to fight for his life down there. It's- yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like against Patrick Mahomes, if he ever got to an AFC championship, I wouldn't like his odds because Mahomes can just make those extra plays because right. he's got those legs. But, man, oh, man, quarterback shifting. You can't just be the okay, good arm, okay accuracy, good arm, Mm -hmm. and stand in the pocket like a statue. That's never going to play in the NFL level. Yep, correct. Yeah, we're going to come back and we're going to jump into a little bit of White Sox baseball and then later on jump into a little bit of Bears this past game against Tampa Bay and also the upcoming game against the Carolina Panthers. That day of the show. Davis in the air. Deep left. It is gone. That's a grand slam. That Davis show, uh, we're back. Definitely want to jump into some MLB uh, locally, even though we know the playoffs are still going on. Uh, yesterday, or Monday, rather. The West- are they? Are they going on? Here in Chicago, I, I don't know if we know that baseball's still going on. Yeah, and Clayton Kershaw had to Clayton Kershaw with that back, huh? Right. Jam it Let's go brave. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, the, the White Sox and uh, their manager Ricky Renteria, or Rick Renteria, decided to mutually part ways. Uh, they did the same with pitching coach Don Cooper, who had been with the team since 2002 as the pitching coach, but had been with the team in the minor league system even longer than that. I've been. With the Wait, Ken, can you that. speak on? that firing because as a non-White Sox fan I was very intrigued by that because uh, obviously with his longevity and they uh, are Don Cooper, you want you want yeah. that well yeah okay. this this is the thing with Coop Coop has been surviving he's about what four managers <laughs> yes I yes. believe so with Jerry Manuel Ozzy Robin Ventura and Rick Renteria he decided he, he survived four managers right and we mm-hmm. let's go back to this one the Izzy one right here, right? Where, listen, Joe Cowley put it out there. And I'm not one to disbelieve Joe Cowley, all right? Joe Cowley, when it comes to the reporting, is a MacGyver about getting to that ish, all right? He's not out here playing friends with nobody. He was reporting years back that Don Cooper was a snitch and running and telling uh, Kenny Williams everything. So, you know, stuff like that gets around the league. On top of that, people want to bring in their own people. You know what I'm saying? So. 
whoever the Sox next manager, and we'll get to that later, wants, wants, wants to bring in. That's one of the key reasons Coop had to be let go was because, one, I heard he snitched. I don't want him in my, back here in my, my, my clubhouse and he's running back and saying things that when we want to keep some of these things in the clubhouse. And two, I may not get along with him. He can be, we love him to death, but he's cantankerous as hell. We all know that, all right? He's very cantankerous. He likes being cantankerous. He wears his New York on his sleeve. <sighs> and then what if, what, how does he feel necessarily about analytics? I know that, he, they, that he's come closer to them, but really embracing analytics, how does he feel? So you add all that up, if I'm bringing in a top flight manager with championship experience is what uh, Rick Hahn alluded to, but said that, albeit they don't have to have it, but preferably that's where we want to go, recent championship experience, you're not, that guy's not coming down here having Coop doing Coop on him. On top of that, reportings that, you know, Coop, kind of wasn't on the, on the ball like that. Like, he, he wasn't engaged, I should say, the last season and a half or a couple seasons. So, basically, he was going through the motions for the most part. Uh, so, I mean, it, it was time. I remember the first people person uh, that just said something was Jay Hood on this show. And he's basically like, when are they going to get rid of Coop? And then we're just so used to because the Sox pitching outside of last year when and these kids were just coming up from the minor leagues. Some of these kids were in the minor leagues. Only one that really had been in the pros for a defined amount of time was Carlos Rodon. Um, you know, all the, they, we had all those UCL tears last year. When you talk about Dane Dunning, Kopik, uh, Rondon, you know what I'm saying? I believe I'm missing one other person. Um, but still... Dunning we, had a, a tear at one point. No, no, Dunning. I said Dunning, Rodon, okay. Kopik. You know what I'm saying? But, and only Kopik Cop, had only been up for a cup of tea, so I don't know if you can put that on Coop. But Carlos had been here for a Four seasons, basically, the better part of four seasons, I believe. Even though I know he's been injured during that period, during, during that time, also. But um, still, it just you know, as a system, the Sox do well with pitching too. Even though he's the figurehead in the majors, you know, the pitching, the, the pitching coach, the system is, has done well. We just have to make sure that we can keep them healthy. Which that was one thing I will say about Coop. Their pro hurlers had like the least amount of injuries for over a decade, like. The Sox had the least amount of, of, of pitchers on uh, the, the injured reserve in MLB, I believe. And I don't think I'm lying with that. Like, they, 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 their pitchers did not get – their starters primarily did not get injured. All right, you got to get at to Coop. All right, you know, you can definitely probably everyone over there, but you got to get Coop his props. Uh, Coop was the man. He's been the, the longest tenured pitching coach in the MLB probably by – I think the next person may have started in 07. But still, um, you know, shout, look, listen, shout out to him. Let me say that. This wasn't, this isn't like the Ricky situation. <laughs> All right. right. This one had to be done and it was time. You know what I'm saying? Because I, 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 I compare the Ricky situation and not Ricky, but who people wanted to replace Ricky to only dating people from your high school. Like some people, you'd be like, you only going to date people you went to high school with? Like it's a world out here, right? And I'm referring to Oz again. And how many times have you seen it from the Herb interview? I've definitely done it with Sean Sierra, uh, but because because they have an affinity for eyes again, and by no means am I saying I don't have an affinity for eyes again. But what I'm saying is we need some new blood in here. All right, so I want to get into this part with the Ozzy thing. Now I've mentioned it, the liability because yes, I think we all know that Ozzy has learned some of his lessons. But Ozzy again is going to be Ozzy again. You know what I'm saying? And that you don't even want him to have, say some, especially if this isn't even a decade ago. Say something off the wall that can get you, get the organization, I won't say in trouble, but frowned upon. Two, it's a new era analytically. You know what I'm saying? So why would we go back? Why would we go back in a relationship when we can move forward in a fresh relationship? And I didn't also think, and one thing that Ricky said, I didn't think he was a fit for these players. The, you know, the old Sox teams, they, they, they had the personality of grinding it out, but they didn't have an outward personality. You had like AJ, basically. But outside of AJ, everybody else was kind of like t buttoned up to a certain degree. That don't mean like they wore stuffy buttoned up shirts. I just mean they weren't um, opinionated and out there like the Sox team. Now, like, they don't need a, a, a manager to take away from their personality. And I'm not, or overshadow, I think, is a better use, a better word I should use. 
they don't need a manager to overshadow that this this team has enough personalities they don't need to be combative with their manager who's also trying to show his personality i just i didn't think it was a good mix and i'm so happy they like this is some grown ass white socks ish that we've seen, right? Like, and it's sad that I, I, I'm happy for it because as a Sox fan, I should have been getting this all along. You know what I'm saying? Like, period. This I shouldn't have to wait to 20, 2020, well, really the last four years as far as really flipping everything and getting players that are multidimensional rather than just either slugging or a guy that can run fast but he can't do anything with the bat. Um, I shouldn't have to wait all this time, but now to see it and then for them, and this was such a, I remember Paul Sullivan in the trip was like, yeah, the Sox, you know, they could get rid, rid of Rick, Rick Renteria, but they're not. And now you have to see all those people that were like, they're not going to get rid of them, right? And it's like, they, they're telling us, you know, we saw what you saw, right? Like, we're not going to play the, the uh, full money switch around role or whatever. It's like, no, it wasn't that, it wasn't this, it wasn't that. Tell me which one it was. You know, we're not going to play that. No, I was looking at this too. And also, they're saying that we know we can strike while the iron is hot and why waste it. On top of that, there's quality coaches out here uh, that we can snatch up that we did not have the opportunity. Oh, we would not have the opportunity due to the fact that they got caught cheating. Yes, they did get caught cheating. All right. And I understand that some people may be ambivalent to that. I'm not. All right. I, I don't think it's good. Um, but, you know, forgiveness is divine. Um, I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, I'm on my team. Listen, I'm sorry. You can say whatever. We we can we can chalk this up later. All right. We're the Black Sox anyway. All right. Um, I, want a guy, I want a guy that is the top top tippy of his craft. Period. And we know that's AJ Hinch. And guess what? Go get. Let's on this. We we're actually going through formalities. You know AJ Hinch got this job, right, Ryan? Uh, yeah, I guess if a playoff, like if the Dodgers jettison Dave Roberts, maybe that would be the only one. He's not coming here. He not, we don't want none of that. He's not, no, no, no. I'm saying A.J. Yeah. Inch would want that. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're totally right. Whoa, listen, we'd be done. There'd be no way we'd get him. We need him signed now! <laughs> we, gotta wait. we can't sign him to after the World Series. Listen, and I don't need you to do anything fraudulent, i.e., uh, uh, um, what was, uh, Joe Thomas. Is it Joe Thomas? And uh, oh, I think I know what you're talking about. And uh, Kevin McHale with uh, the Minnesota December Wolves. Is it Joe, Joe Smith? Joe Smith. Joe Smith. Fought the four when basically he signed a deal he couldn't sign under the table. And it was for Joe Smith. You was like trying to eat more time with Joe Smith. <laughs> like, what are you doing? At least, listen, at least we're it's, it's, I, I know why you're doing it. I see you, Rick Hahn. But to me, this spoke to we already got the guy in the can. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got rid of Coop, right? You got rid of Ricky. This speaks to, like, yeah, this dude, we just got to wait till after the World Series and his punishment is up. We got, we got this dude. Uh, of the openings left, he would pick the White Sox. Also, also, you bringing up the – listen, I'll tell you this, and I'm, you, just, you just spun me with that. We'll know who he chooses but how quickly Dave Roberts gets fired. Yeah. If he gets fired, if they lose in the next day, he's out, right? Yeah, if, like, does Roberts get fired if he doesn't win the World Series? Or doesn't get to the World Series, I'm sorry. Yes, he does. Oh, my gosh. Like, that becomes obviously the number one managerial opening. Yeah, dude, I would go there in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful weather, great stadium, huge great. market. Huge fan base, even though you payroll. can't get some of the teams, you can't get some of the games on, uh, on all over the market. But like you said, significant, significant. Yeah, but you can get a lot of the big names out in the, the <laughs> baseball market because of that money from that right. TV right. market that You're no right. one can watch. You're right. So, yeah, we'd be done. Dude, listen. Hey, you still have Alex Cora, though, as a backup. That's a really good backup. Oh, man, I don't want to settle, man. I, I Listen, I won't be out. Oh, I don't, I don't know if that's settled. I don't want – I don't want – I don't want to see it. Like, what, let me, let's take it back. Bryce Harper, Manny Machado, would you have felt a settling if you got one or the other at the time yeah. of that free agency? I would have felt if I got Bryce Harper, I was settling. But what, how how bad of a – like, would you just be like, It wouldn't have been the Bryce, worst – but you got to understand, dude, I'm a Sox fan, all right? I want it off. Can I have it off once? Like, can this I? This is Chicago. Off? You know you can never have it off. But that's the, see, that's the Chicago problem with Chicago mentality. And ownership knows we don't expect 
to have crazy things happen. Yeah. We're like, we, we, we start thinking about ownership's money and why they can't do something instead of looking at that money that's coming through the back end that they're making and be like, dude, why aren't you going all the way? It's just, that's how, no, I want I wanted A.J. Hinch, all right? He cheated. I still want that man. And not in the platonic, I mean, it, not in the platonic sense. Not, <laughs> this is going all over the place. Well, the, the passion is really, really coming out of you. <laughs> oh, it's ravenous. It. Taking it, take it from the tippy. But, uh, yeah, my gosh, got rabies. That's <laughs> AJ Hinch. <laughs> yeah, but, um, so Rick with Rick Renteria, uh, listen, Rick Renteria set this franchise up in a fantastic way. Um, I just know, like the Cubs, he spent one year there. All right, okay, he spent Whatever. one year. Ricky's boys don't quit. He's been one. He was here for four seasons. What, you guys own him now? Because. Oh, he's much more one of us. Actually, no, no. He was here, wait. Oh, because we fired him and you guys called it a mutual. Oh, here's a, a mutual. Rick Rick decided we he did didn't want to be on the playoff team. Way more class, baby. Way he, more he, class. he knocked on Rick Hahn's door. He said, you know what? This culture is built here. I need to go somewhere else. I've done my job. Exactly. I must leave. There's a. There's a young I don't need of, rings. I right? don't need glory. Listen, listen. No. We, above five hundred. Above five hundred is is the worst feeling that I can ever have. I need a team losing as I am raising these young men up. All right, so another man can come and take that team. Yeah. Another. You, you know, know what's a championship ring? Holding a man's shoulder and telling him, "Son, you've really improved as a ball player. Right? Don't give up on me." <laughs> So uh, yeah, uh, Ricky. Rick Rick did us a solid. Uh, he he got this culture going. Uh, he got these players going. But I'm happy the White Sox didn't waste a year on letting him try to figure it out because we shouldn't. It's just the truth. We man, this is this is how you do your boys. Thank God we got rid of that fan earlier than later. You you right. You know you just stated Branch Ricky's philosophy, correct? Hey, you're, at least at least the rather than a year late. Well, then that's why he's our guy, because we got rid of him first. That matters more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, yesterday. Listen, it was like Christmas. Um, I think I heard the news. I, I, turned on, I wanted to watch TV for Dak is why I turned on. I recorded a lot of stuff. And I was like, all right, Dak is had surgery. He's looking great. Great. Cool. And then on the, um, on the text chain, our text chain, I think Tony broke it. I broke it. You broke it? Yeah, baby. Okay, my apologies, apologies to you. Man. I'm sorry. Man. You can see where his favorite is. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta earn that. <laughs> no, you broke it. Um, I think he replied and D replied. Um, and it was like, what? Right? And like, so all of us are like, what's, I don't even know if when that happened, we knew Coop was gone. I think we found out Coop was gone. When they yeah, I think have, that was a little bit later. Yeah, then when they start but to that have, might have been pretty quick after, too. Okay. So then we, we started listening to the, I turned to the, to the Facebook page of, uh, of NBC Chicago, Sports Chicago, and Rick Hahn's there, and he said that, you know, Ozzy is not a candidate. I was like, this is the, one of the better days of my life because I don't have to hear. Still, I've been having this. Can I say one thing with Ozzy, though? Please go ahead. If you're going to, if the reports are true and you're going to reach out to Tony La Russa, why wouldn't you go out to Ozzy again? Don't compare Ozzy again to Tony La Russa. Oh, my God. Here we go. Don't, Come on. Dude. Tony he is Russa. king anti-analytics. Dude, I'm just still saying. Ozzy Ginn has never been – I think Ozzy Ginn was a, a very good manager. Uh, but Ozzy has enough Jim Boylan in him that he'll be like, yes, sir, I'll get on that computer and learn these analytics. Tony La is going to be like, kiss my ass. I want all those rings in the Cardinals. I know Dude. the game. If So, again, if I have to pick between either one of them, I'm taking Tony Russo. Oh. It's period. It's not even, it's not even close. Like, I mean, Jerry's biggest mistake? We're talking about, yeah, depending on leaning too far on Hawk Harrison, thinking he knew something. Dude, Tony Roos is one of the greatest managers in the MLB. Have, has anybody ever said that about Ozzy again? I'll give you that, yes. He has definitely been at the pinnacle, at the top. 
but I don't think he's there anymore. Like Tony La Russa comes now. I'm, I'm not, not saying Tony La Russa in his prime. I don't want listen, I don't I'm I'm good off Tony La Russa. I want AJ Hinch. Then after that, probably probably Oh yeah. All right, you know, but but still it's, it's t- I mean, you don't want Tony La Russa, right? Yeah, a little bit. What what's a little bit? Like, like if I couldn't listen, if if like Hinch is gone. Right. And Cora. Cora's gone. LaRusso's third. The question is, where do I put the bench coach from Houston and the Tampa Bay Rays? Right? That's right. the question. Um, Cause then the, the, see the reason why I I, I want to put Tony Russo under them, because they haven't done it yet. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that just that alone, and they, I don't know how they're gonna do it a seat over from being the bench coach to being the manager. So, but I, I really want to have them above him, but that still worries me, the fact that they've never sat in the hot seat before. You know, and I'll, I may put, I will probably put, San, I will put Sandy Alomar over Tony Russo. Yeah. You know so Oh, yeah. I'll put Sandy over Tony Russo. Um, Tito, if they <laughs> went with Sandy. Um, I would want to bring, T- yeah, Tito. I would bring Tito home. He should, he, he, he coached Michael Jordan in Birmingham. He should be up here. He should have had some time. Yes. Yeah, uh, that's all but, you know like, but you know the isn't, problem with Tito. But you know the problem. He'd be below he's all not those doing, people too. He's not. He's not doing well though. And I mean, I I, I hate oh, to. Wow. Well. I can't bring a can't bring an old friend back in. You got to leave well, him out to pasture. Well, okay. the only thing is, you're gonna have to make sure from that perhaps your bench your bench coach is a guy that you also like to have a manager because we don't know if he's necessarily- Omar Viscal. Yeah, I'm trying to do that too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But, uh, yeah, so uh, that's where I would have him. But yeah, it's just, listen, there's a small interest in me, for, and I'm not saying it's right for Tony La Russa, uh, but he's been gone for so long. And, yeah, I'm, I'm and, surprised. I thought you'd be like, oh, F that A. I don't want him to be, like, slumped over on Stony Island because he was too hammered to, to make it to the crib. I don't need that Tony La Russa or uh, with all the cats Tony La Russa. I wonder if he spades those cats. But, um, yeah, I don't need all of that. But uh, yeah. So didn't that, he endor- endorse like Trump or something like that too? Well, then if that's the facts, then I really don't need to. Well, we, 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 we know where you lie. We know where you lie. Take Tony Russo off this damn list. All right, like no, son. So uh, yeah, that's that's just the, t- yesterday was uh, it was it was it was a really good day. It was a little bittersweet because someone who had been a part of the good, the really good times, that had a really big hand in it. Uh, was let go, but it kind of starts seeming like, what is he really doing? You know, we he's just here. Hey, his role. Can take it from someone that's been there before, that's had to fire Ricky. When you gotta fire Ricky, you gotta fire Ricky, and you can't look back. Damn it! <laughs> you gotta keep moving. I Nobody can't... wants to fire the man. <laughs> Nobody wants. He does good things. Ricky's boys don't quit, but you got to fire the man <laughs> and you got to move on. <laughs> all right. All right. So let's switch over to some Bears discussion uh, on Nash Davis' show. Uh, Ryan Bukovesky, executive producer of this show, and the Flipping Friends. Follow him at Ryan B. Ski and Ryan B. Ski 1. I'm Kenneth Davis. Uh, follow me at That's Davis on all social media platforms. Um, man, listen, Friday, oh boy, Friday, you poke up. Yeah. Listen, they should. Yeah, if, right. Even though, shout out to Layla Rahimi, I heard on Bernstein uh, yesterday, I believe she pointed out that they didn't do a press dump. They made sure they did it on Friday, on Monday. I believe that's what she said during that, which is a great point. Um, but man, if they would have hit me with this on Friday, with Ricky being out and the Bears beat Tom Brady. <laughs> Ooh, Charlie, 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 time, Charlie. Oh, man. It, 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 listen, this has been a nice, but I'll tell you that this has been nice. If Thursday's the beginning of the weekend and we had, there was there was a Indigenous People's Day on Monday, it's been a nice holiday swing right there. Yeah, yeah man. It's been a nice. Feeling it. Ooh. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a warm front just moving wait, wait. on in, in the middle of October. Let me add this to you. Let me add this to you. And Jerry Rostoff is letting. Um, uh, oh my God! Jerry is firing coaches left and right and paying people with, them. People with two more years on their deals, brother. Two more. They're two franchises. 
<laughs> Jerry, it's like, forget it. I'm going down. They're they're not done paying Fred, right? No, it it's not crazy. Um, that's a good one. They may not be. I thought he had two, and then in the middle of three, he was fired for Jim, and then Jim had one. Yeah, that's, they, they probably are playing him. You're probably right. It's like he's paying four coaches right now to see you later. Dude, which also goes to your management and the blunders they've done wasting your money. Uh, but, but Jerry doing that? I'm with Jerry you. saying, okay. Billy Donovan, go get who you want. The, the fact that they're saying, you know what? Here, go succeed. And it's during a pandemic where financially nothing's going to be the same for a period of time. And you know A.J. Hinch isn't cheap. You, He's going to be one of that payday. Listen, no, you was cheating. You ain't – you you not getting top, top. Yeah, yeah. tell that to the you next team that's top. like, hey, we'll throw in that top five. Listen, you getting second tier top. Oh, no way. Bottom tier, top tier. So I, I'm just still saying, listen, I'm not paying you. Listen, you got to remember you cheated a little bit. You got to take a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but again, this is a, as much as it is for the White Sox. And obviously he would pick the White Sox because of the talent. But every situation in baseball that has an opening has a chance to get the best manager by far and away that would ever be open. Yeah, but you could Tigers, overpay for that. Listen, shit. listen you're going to go, he's going to go up to, to, to Detroit. All right, friend of the show, Creighton was like, "Well, what about like the Mets? The Mets is gonna take a minute to get that fixed. What about and the Red Sox? Brought, they brought Sandy Anderson back. They they brought back a guy that they were great. They, the rest, the rest. What about the Red Sox? They probably just gonna bring Cora back. Listen, if you're gonna bring back, if you're gonna bring in the Chitty, you may as well bring in the one that won the World Series for you. Correct? Yeah. What if they want him back? Uh, listen, I, I expect that he may go back to the Red Sox. I, listen, let me be honest with you. I hope if I get my man at H.A. Hitch, I hope he does get to go back to the Red Sox because, you know, my man won him a World Series in, in Boston, one of the racist most places in, in the country, but still, he won one there, and he deserves to have another opportunity. Uh, I'm still trying to see if I can find the manager list. Eight, six million in 2018 for Joe Matt. <laughs> That yeah, was up so there. I think it's about six. I, I, I'm thinking. I, I think if Larusa was still coaching, he would have one of them ignorant ass Phil Jackson deals. Where it's like you make what? You know what the Knicks were paying Phil or whatever. Mm-hmm. It, it would have to be someone that was tenured that had had won probably multiple World Series or something, or at least had. And I know this guy is an abusive ass, like Bobby Cox. Even though he just won one, but how many times he had uh, uh, Atlanta sitting there in the in the NL uh, East. Uh, winning the pennant every year, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it'd have to be somebody like that for it to get up there to like nine million dollars, I believe, uh, in the MLB. So, like I'm saying, I give you five. That's all I was trying to say. I give you, I give you four point four. But that's what I'm saying. What if uh, somebody listen, comes listen, in? It's, it's, listen, if it's not the Dodgers, man, to be honest with you, if it's not the Dodgers, you may as well come look at this. <laughs> let me show you these shiny ass toys I got back here. Meet this one right here. His name is Eloy. He hasn't even been healthy all the time. And Shuddy's going opposite way on, on, uh, on sliders. Yeah, already, sliders. Also, this guy right here, who knew he was going to be uh, one of the best batting guys in the league? He's our shortstop in St. Madison. Oh, yeah, we got the MVP from last year. The, one of the greatest Cubans ever, all right? Ask, uh, well, I don't want to ask again this, so I won't say that name. But you can ask some people down there, okay? All right? Then, I said, yeah, I got a guy, man, he's fighting COVID. But he came out there and he balled out as hard as he could. I got you on Mikado. This is your Mikado. You like Slappy? I got Slappy. I got a little Mick Magical right over here. Oh, my forgot. I, I was I pulled a Pat Riley when I, I dropped the rings on you. Now I ain't got rings, but I ain't dropped the biggest one. I got Lewis Robert, Louis Robert out here, right? This kid may be the number one guy in MLB. You I'm just saying now, if you like toys and you don't want to have to cheat, we ain't got no garbage cans around here. You, Maybe he likes money more, though. Maybe he does. Maybe, but I would think. You know what I would think too. And I, I still put the Dodgers in play. Um, I would think he wants to um, clean up his reputation. You know what I'm saying? Like I would think that's the biggest thing. And go to the Black Sox. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bet can't beat him. Join him. Like, come on. With this. Listen, cheating have franchise a, and cheating manager reunites. Have a, have a seat right there next to Shoeless Joe. <laughs> We're gonna put you. We're gonna put your statue up next to Shoeless Joe statue out in the outfield. 
yeah, I could see Rick Hahn taking it to Shoeless Joe Jackson Cemetery, <laughs> ripping out the grave next to him. Like, hey, All right, so uh, yeah, uh, so dude, I, I, I that's my that's my list. I'm um, I'm feeling AJ Hinch, and you can look at me as a despicable person. I'm not. I'm a good guy, uh, but I can forgive him. You're a Sox fan, damn it. And that's all you need to say. I can forgive him for cheating. Hey, if the Cubs were in the same boat, I'd do the same thing. I would I'm say happy. get A.J. Hinch. I'm happy you would say that. I know, I know you for real. You for real, for real. I would <laughs> say get A.J. Hinch. Listen, I'll say this much. If he was, like, straight, let's just say, like, A.J. Hinch was just straight. Yeah. I'd be like, yeah. I don't want that around here. Not He cheating. Dog. Shorty won the top. Like, if it was just Alex Cora, A.J. Hinch was still in Houston, I, I don't know if everybody would be clamoring for Alex Cora, per se. That ring would be very tasty, mm-hmm. but that's just one year, you know, and it was a right. cheating scandal. Like, right, right. I don't you. know. I'm with you. So, uh, again, no, I mean, even with managerial experience, you still have the fact that Hinch was with the Diamondbacks before he got to Houston. It's just he's, he has a well-rounded – Listen, it's, He won like 300 games in three yeah, seasons or something. Yeah. It's he's insane. Won, he won over 101 – or he's won at least over 101 games in the last three years. Last yeah, three like – Dude. Come on. That's yeah. hard to do with pristine with cheating. talent. And cheating. That's hard yeah. to do with cheating. All right, but uh, yeah. I, well, depends how good you are cheating, though. I know, he's I really know. good. They was doing some. That wasn't regular. <laughs> that wasn't regular baseball. Why cheating, would he that? admit? Oh, I knew there was something going on there. I wish I had said something. Damn, yeah. I just enjoyed that winning <laughs> too much. <laughs> I got, I got hooked on, man. I got hooked. Yeah. Oh, did I want to win a ring? Yeah. All right, all right. I forgot how to. I, that, now we totally went off the rails because we were supposed to be talking about last Thursday night's game. <laughs> and we came all the way back here. Uh, but, yeah, getting back to the Bears, um, looking at that game, going into it, I would have flipped it with the Indianapolis game, which also really just shows us, like, how do we let Phillip Rivers do that to us? Like, Phillip Rivers is out here getting shot in the streets, right? Like, he looks like he needs to retire during the year. Like, and I hate to say that because I've been a Phillip Rivers fan, but, man, it is bad business behind one of the best line, offensive lines in the National Football League. But I would flip it because I would have thought the Bears beat Indian and they were going to lose to Tampa Bay. Uh, man, listen. And how about how the Colts gave up 32 to the friggin' Browns? Listen, is it is it a proximity thing that the Colts hate us or something? Because they was playing like we were rivals or something. You know what I'm right. saying? Playing like we were in the right. AFC South. And, you Did know, they watch 06 highlights before the trip I over? Don't know what was it? They, dude, they had some fury. And them against the Bears. They have the Chicagoans. Listen, the coach must have hyped them up like from playing football. Like, yeah, this y'all can go steal this one. This, this you can beat these boys. It's kind of sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, coach. aren't uh, Cleveland and Chicago somewhat proximity to Indianapolis? Isn't that just as much their rival? Listen, I'm of course, and I don't think that the players have Indy is jealous of Chicago. Let's just state it's all facts. Like going, I've said this before. Going to a playoff Bulls playoff game in Indianapolis. We weren't really getting heckled. How this is how polite they were, and we know Indiana can be a crazy state. These guys were nice to us for the most part. They only they, they were only saying, "You guys are from uh, you guys are from Chicago. You're from Indiana." You just like because you could just see how many fans in Indiana became Bulls fans, right? I mean, again, right. I love Reggie Miller, so I, I do. Yeah, uh, I love Reggie. I hated him, but I loved him, and I I love him, right? So I, I think if I lived in Indy, I would have been a, I would have been an Indianapolis fan. I would have I would have had an affinity for Jordan, but it would have took me a minute. Uh, so they were saying that, and I was like, dude, walk back to this garage. You can look at my license plates. I'm, we're from Illinois. We're not uh, Pacers. I mean, uh, we're not Indiana uh, Bulls fans or whatever. But they were they were fairly nice, uh, whatever. But they, you can still feel that slight inferiority complex, I guess. Well, you know, you're the big city in the, in the region. You know what I'm saying? It's only could be us, man. Shout out to right. 50 years ago, you guys was doing big things. Um, call us Indy when you get a baseball and a hockey team. Or well, maybe we'll give you a call back. Just that's a baseball team. You don't need the hockey team. But um, you get, okay. Well, yeah, well, let's just dig it into their side while we have it. But the thing was still that stood out to me and last Thursday's night's Bears uh, versus Tampa Bay game was the play of the defense. Um, was those cornerbacks out there doing their dizzle? You know, was Khalil Mack 
returning back to form. You know what I'm saying? Like, we need- can we cliche the return of the Mac like everybody return else? Return of the Mac, yeah. We, you know, like that. That defense made me feel good. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it did. It, that defense. It made me feel like there's still a change. There's still a, a window here, and I don't know if that window is is is, is going to go beyond this year. I, I kind of feel like it should because I don't still. I don't know if you have the person you need a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? And Nick Foles isn't playing to a level where it's like he won't mess it up yet. Like he has to get to where it's like he's a game manager who can pop out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. I mean, I, I've used this before. Before we, like, uh, Jake Delhom. Like, you know, some days Delhom was out there throwing that rock. Right? Alex Smith. Yes. Would he be Alex, another one? Alex Smith. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I need you. I need you to be better than Alex Smith. I need you to be able to pop out of that. Like, it's like, all, we got a good enough defense. Game manage, but it's gonna be like five times in the game. I'm gonna need you to pop out. I'm gonna, I don't need you to be shut down, Charlie. I need you to go vertical. You know what I'm saying? Like. Those are the things that um, that 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 I, I I would like to see before I start feeling like this is a legit playoff team, and that you know what I'm saying they may even um, get a, a win in the playoffs or, or whatever. Because as of right now, defensively they're better than Green Bay, but we know offensively, uh, and that's even mm-hmm. with they have not being out and their second best receiver uh, being out now too. Um, we but still Aaron Rodgers is is doing his thing, and Matt Lafleur. Is, is dialing them up, you know, especially according to Aaron Rodgers. So I don't even think you're better than that team. I do think there's a chance you may be better than the Vikings. And I believe Dalvin Cook is out. I think I saw that in the ticker today. Yeah, I think he's likely out week six. Yeah, so and I think it may seem like he may miss more than just the game. Um, so, that you know, that engine doesn't doesn't really go well without Dalvin Cook. Um, that's one reason I don't never draft him. I'm always leery of him getting hurt to say that about anybody. Um, and then Vikings defense, I mean, they were solid against Seattle, but Seattle has no offensive line. Right. Like, they didn't necessarily shut them down either. Oh, I, I totally agree. I think the Bears should be able to beat the Vikings. I'll say that. I don't know if the Bears can beat Green Bay. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, Nick's got to get a whole of a lot better if, yeah, he, yeah. if they're going to even come into that talk. Because offensive also- line-wise, they, they're struggling. And we can't fix that. And you, listen, the guy that was your best offensive lineman this year is, is out for the rest of the year in James. Mm-hmm. James right. Your, your guard, your left guard was killing. He was doing, he was, he was the best offensive lineman this year. He's out. The guy that was maybe supposed to be able to spell this terrible left tackle in Charles Leno Jr. Barr has to play guard now. Yeah. Um, Jermaine. I was really, I liked the promising nature of Alex Barr's, but Man, not not in place of James Daniels. <laughs> I'd right. rather be in place of somebody else. But right, um, but you know, like the Matt Nagy won. It's still on Matt Nagy with this play call. I was happy to see something that we hadn't seen happen to Matt Nagy, and that was his quarterback tell him what to do. Um, that's what I like from having a veteran quarterback where it can be like, no, 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 this is what I'm seeing. This is what we need to do. And you can tell that whatever the coverage was, whatever the flow was, Nick Foles felt that he had that team at a vulnerable state and he wanted to continue to hit him. And Matt Nagy pulled, pulled, the, pulled the rings back and he went out there and told him like, no. And then you start seeing all shotgun after that, right? And it's like, I, I like, like that makes me feel better about Nick Foles. It's like, you've been around the block too many times. If you need to tell this young coach what you're seeing out there and what y'all need to do so you can get this offense going, go ahead and do that because that's not something Mitch could have done because, one, you don't trust that Mitch can read the coverages. So Mitch coming back to Matt Nagy telling him, nah, coach, let's do that, be like, you can't even read. And I'm not saying that. And I mean not read words, everyone. I mean read coverages. Like he, he, he doesn't have that, 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 that build up um, – what a word am I looking for? Equity. He doesn't have that built up equity from, and now Nick Foles has had a, a roller coaster career, but he won a Super Bowl, right? And he took a team again coming off the bench and to the playoffs and almost went deep into the playoffs again. Um, he doesn't have, Mitch doesn't have that type of equity. And he's not a guy that's been in the system for a, a, a lot of years like Nick Foles is. So for, to see that, it, it, it makes me feel better because now there's two, eye, there's two eyes out there. One, the quarterback is also supposed to be an extension of the head coach. And if your head coach is like my extension 
can't really really process what's going on, then there's an issue. So now if you have a guy out there that can process and read the coverages, now he's an extension of the head coach. And he also can tell the head coach, huh, no, I know what the game plan was, but we need to switch this up because this is the looks that they're giving me right now. Yeah, and to kind of piggyback that, like watching that game with the Buccaneers, and I'm, I'm worried that we're going to see this – moving forward with Nick Foles, I hope that some of these things are correctable, but like play calling Matt Nagy had some bad plays on Thursday, but he also called that shot to Darnell Mooney. That was perfect. That Nick mm-hmm. Foles sailed as if it was Mitch. I mean, you literally slapped a different number. You wouldn't have known a difference whatsoever. And he misses that third and two on the first third down. That's wide open. It's like Al Robinson wide open third and two, like Nagy. He called it, drew it up, and he missed it. But when it was late in that game and threw that wheel route to either Cordell Patterson, but especially David Montgomery on that huge completion, Mm -hmm. that's where you see the difference. Like, Nick is reading. He's reading a defense, and he's making a quick decision. Mitch would have never been able to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's unfortunate Nick's making throws that Mitch could do, as in missing the deep shots downfield. That's a problem. But no matter what, Nick's making throws that Mitch can't do when it's just those quick throws on a blitz all or nothing. you got to find the right guy for 13 yards or we don't get the field goal game over. And I just – I don't think Mitch would a- even be able to attempt that at this point in time in his development. Great point. I totally agree with you. Um, I mean, those are salient points, to say the least. He has to clean up some of that. Some of that he's just in him. That's why Nick Foles isn't someone – that uh, everyone was like, give me right. Nick Foles, give me Nick Foles. Like some of that, you, he, that is going to be him. But yeah, he has, he did, but he, he, there was no preseason for anyone, but he didn't get training camp reps like that. Like all of them, like what your starter quarterback is supposed to get. They were both splitting reps. And at one point they stopped splitting reps because they had to get ready for the first game and they just gave it all to Mitch. Um, so he's got to kind of get lathered up and back in it. I think this game, this game, this game and the next game, then by the next game, he should be in it. If he's not in it, Lordy. And again, to know this, Nick Foles has an injury history. Mitch better stay warm. You know, and listen, every time Nick Foles gets hit, I can see Mitch like, did you just see like right. when, when Nick Foles got hit and Mitch was right there? It was like, <laughs> it's like, yes. <laughs> Please. Ooh, come on, you got to come low. You got to low. We, low, right? Hey. And you know what makes that worse, too, is you're seeing Teddy Bridgewater in Carolina. He's killing it. And that's a guy that the Bears kind of had their conversations with. But, you know, now that we know Mitch is completely useless as the Bears quarterback, they should have probably went harder for Teddy Bridgewater instead of Nick Foles. Out of all, I mean, we'll see. Out of all the – as of right now, out of the four or five quarterbacks the Bears could have signed or traded for, um, which is Tom Brady, Nick Foles, uh, Cam Newton, and uh, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. T- Teddy Bridgewater's having the best year as of right now. It's with everything because yeah. he's, not, he's not throwing – his efficiency is higher is what I should say, I believe. His efficiency is higher. He's completing like 73% exactly. of his passes. He's one football? point behind David Carr. <sighs> and like He's at 73, and, and David Carr is at 73.1. And he's still not a deep ball thrower, but he can he can do it on occasion. He can do he can do it enough. And he is automatic fifteen and under, basically. Yeah, he's he's a spinner more than a thrower. He's 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 much more of a spinner. Like he can spin it enough, but you, he doesn't have a big arm. Coming out of Louisville, that's one of the things that kind of made me like I don't know about this one. Let alone his slight build. Um, mm-hmm. But but he's getting, releasing that ball really quickly. With that bad Carolina offensive line on top of it. They know Christian McCaffrey, even though I know he's doing well without Christian McCaffrey sooner or later, that's got to come back to haunt you, not having that super Swiss Army knife. The best running back in the league, like he, he, kinda, he is the best running back. If Saquon Barkley, if Saquon Barkley wasn't, wasn't hurt, he last year this was still uh, uh, the Brendan I mean, Christian McCaffrey was the, the number one guy. We had to see how it worked out this year, but he's the number one running back in the NFL talent-wise. Speaking of running game, like, I get Matt Nagy, and I don't necessarily criticize him too much for his lack of run calling in that Tampa Bay game, 
I understood why because his offensive line is getting whooped. And I think he still did it enough to just throw them off enough. So I was fine with that. But he's got to get back to running the football. Totally. It's not even a question. Hopefully we'll have a Lamar Miller appearance. Um, he totally has – dude, that has, to, that has to be one of the key building blocks, period. And I don't care who's the quarterback. You know what I'm saying? You had you even the better teams, the better quarterbacks. Look at look at what uh Kansas City did. All right. They went out and got Clyde Edwards Zillaire. Like, we're gonna get back to what we used to do with Kareem Hunt. We were super dangerous. Uh and I know their running back last year did well, but still we need someone who not like this, dude. Yeah, someone like that. Look at whoever was in the backfield of Tom Brady. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like, dude, we're gonna we're gonna run it, we're gonna we're gonna do some short passes or basically runs and stuff like that. Like most of the top flight guys, look now, and he didn't have one all the time. Look at Aaron Jones in Green Bay right now. Right. The last two years, last, this season and last year, been, been one of their best weapons right behind their quarterback, basically. Like, How good would Jimmy Garoppolo be if they didn't find Raheem Morstead? He'd be, listen, where's Jimmy? Jimmy Garoppolo is where me and you are, on the bench. Uh, <laughs> man, dude, dude, boy, boy, boy. That money right there, that money right there, that money right there. Oof. Woo! Look, dude, if you have to, look, if they have to move off of Jimmy Garoppolo, I know we're talking about the Bears and Carolina Panthers, if they have to move off of him, you let him lose you a Super Bowl because you're saying, like, damn, he ain't the one. And you, dude, you damn it, any quarterback that was straight – could have won that damn Super Bowl with how bad Patrick Mahomes. I mean, that's basically what we're talking about with Nick Foles and Mitch Trubisky. Like, we seen that Jimmy Garoppolo miss throw. We know what that's like here in Chicago. If you got a quarterback that can take a team to a Super Bowl, he doesn't miss that throw. Facts. Facts. That's not what the greats do. Or the greats get so many opportunities if they do do, do a throw like that, they can they can come right back. Or if the, if the receiver misses the ball, they can come right back. You know what I'm saying? But somebody like um, Garoppolo and how that office is run to protect him from himself, he doesn't get a ton of those opportunities. And he missed George Kittle a drive or two earlier. Yeah, so, oof. but still, uh, looking at this Carolina game, I mean, the key to me is the defense. If that defense plays like it played last week, and I know right now all of a sudden Teddy Bridgewater is a lot more elusive than Tom Brady. I mean, he should be more elusive than regardless, but when up, us being – uh, NFC North guys and knowing what took place with him in practice in Minnesota with that knee being dislocated. Uh, and he was never a speed guy before then either. He had right. some quickness. But That's he was never a run. You never looked at him as a running quarterback. Right. Or super elusive. Just because of his genes, you know, he had a little bit more advantage than just a stationary guy. <laughs> <laughs> But um, but for the Bears, too, I think big key, I mean, Carolina sucks at stopping the run. I think they're 25th against the run, and they're 31st at, like, 5.2 yards a carry on average. Mm. They should be prime pluckings for this running offense. And if, man, you get Nick Foles in this play action going and he hits a few downfield, like, if the Bears could find a way to consistently break 20, not get up necessarily at 30, but where we're talking 25 is the norm, mm-hmm. the real legitimate average. I mean, it, with the extra playoff spot, what are we talking here? They're playoff bound for sure. And with that defense, they got a shot. Now you're totally right. They, def- they definitely have a shot, and you have a capable quarterback. Um, but And this was something I harped on. You're going to need running backs. And, again, I hope Lamar Miller – because, man, if you think – if you think those other two running backs are going to finish the season healthy, you're asking a lot. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're asking you, – and I'm not to say they may have injuries that will keep them out, but you you brought up Raheem Mostat and think he was out. He just came back, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you, you, you're you asking a lot of these guys. So, you need another runner in there who's versatile, who can catch the ball at the backfield. Again, we know he's not a world beater. wasn't a world beater in Miami. He had times when he was better in uh, Houston as far as Lamar Miller. But you need to get him up here and kind of start taking some of that Tariq Cohen role um, away and get get that get those plays back in the playbook, even using David Montgomery like that because when he came when he was coming out of Iowa State, he was hitting us with how well he was catching the ball. Um, but, yeah, even because that's even still – I know we're talking about between the tackles, even if you're just West Coast in that run sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, yeah I'll take that too. You know, so, but you got to do it intelligently. 
You know what I'm saying? Not just with screen passes and whatnot. Yeah, I think Lamar Miller, like, we got to see. Don't want to go crazy or overboard. But that could be a sneaky good pickup. If he still has athleticism in those legs and has enough speed, I mean, he probably fits as a number two back against, uh, like, a move – like, the blundering object that David Montgomery is. And I shouldn't say blundering because he's pretty agile and he actually is really good with his feet and makes guys miss. But he's a load. He mm-hmm. comes in you and he hits you hard. And that might play really well with a Lamar Miller in the second half when defenses don't feel like hitting anymore. Good point. Really, really good point. So, yeah, that's that, that's definitely – I want to see the receivers um, play, still play a little bit better. Um, again, Nick miss, was missing them a lot. But still, you know, I want to see them step their games up. Um, I want to see another deep throw to Mooney. I want to course. see that. I want to see a couple of deep throws to me. Right. I want to see like that exact type of style again. Like try to get that going. Like he's, mm-hmm. if you can really get defenses to be like, yo, we got to worry about him and they already have to worry about Allen Robinson. You got enough guys underneath and Anthony Miller and these tight ends that they could just be feasting. Makes running the ball easier too, because you can't have the safety in the box. Yeah. Like, let's get let's get a couple shots. Because at this point, if I was a defense, I'd be like, they can throw the football deep. This isn't Mitch. But they ain't throwing the football that deep. Like, right. they ain't doing it in a way that you need to be afraid of it at this point. And, dude, let's see. Let's let's get some two tight end formations. You know what I'm let's see someone helping out uh, Charles Leno Jr., you know, chipping. And have Cole Komet over there chipping. And then have Shuddy go out there. Have Shuddy fake chip. Curl, right? You know what I'm saying? Like use, use. Yeah. It. You know what I'm saying? Get these tight ends doing earlier, man. Like you got enough weapons to keep teams unbalanced if you're thinking but still doing fundamental uh, football. So yes, I'm exploiting these different players and using the same play, but I'm taking advantage of a different aspect or a player in that play. All right, but I'm still going to run the ball and not fall in love with the pass uh, too much. Like those are the things that it's, it, I know it's easier said than done. But also, you can sit there as a coach and you can overcomplicate things when football yeah. is still football. You know what I'm saying? Simple football, right? That's what yeah, we harp just, on this show for years. Right. Just sometimes stop trying to be a wizard, you know what I'm saying, and just get win the game. Listen, also, we can still remember, this is Matt Nagy's third season. Like, he's really young, and he wasn't a season coordinator, right? Like, so right. he's still learning on the job. But I like that point that you made with Cole Komet. You know, he's supposed to be your blocking tight end. If he's struggling at blocking, why don't you put him up against a tackle like Charles Leno that's struggling and block that guy? How about right. you let both of them do that and figure it out from there, like you said, or have him run a chip and then run out? Like, yeah. boost some guys' confidence. Like, that's what I just said with Darnell Mooney. Like, get a deep shot. Really get this offense juiced up with what they're doing. Totally, totally. All right, we're going to come back and go up for grabs. The best segment of the show with Ryan Bukovetsky, that David show. Seven. Oh, oh my goodness. How about Davis? Whoa. Again, taking it in, springs high and down hard. All right, that David show, last segment, and it's time to go up for grabs with Ryan Bukovetsky. Follow him at Ryan B. Ski and Ryan B. Ski. One on Instagram. Ryan, what do you have? Well, we got football. Football on the mind, football on the brain. And we're going to go through a variety of football, I guess, stories. And maybe or may not contain stuff to the Bears. But the first one does, I guess, in an odd way, because the Bears beat the Falcons this year. And uh, they're going to play the Carolina Panthers. But unlike what the Bears did, Carolina put the final nail in the Dan Quinn, Thomas Dimitrioff, GM situation in Atlanta because – they got fired for their 0-5 start, despite Todd Gurley's, I guess, efforts. I heard on Jake Glazer's story before on Fox Sunday how he was championing for uh, uh, Dan Quinn to be the head coach. So he was going to go all out this week. And he did. He dominated. So I guess did, what are your thoughts? He did well on my fantasy team. Uh, he's yeah. my flex guy. But my one of my running backs, Aaron Jones, had a buy. So I had to boost him up. And I looked – listen. Hey. I lost. By, I lost by nine points. Ooh. Dak Dak missed the second half, basically. Oh, baby! 
right? Yeah. I lost. You knew I was getting that ten. You know I was getting ten yeah. out of back in the second half. Oh yeah, I, I lost by nine points. Uh, yeah. Based on the way the Cowboys kept scoring with Andy Dalton, I'm thinking so, sir. I'm yeah, thinking so. so. Yeah, I was. Gonna, I was gonna, but what? What did you think of the uh, Dan Quinn firing? I guess at this point, because we knew it was coming. Also, let's let's uh, let's throw on to that first. I thought good riddance. Um, you wasted a ton of talent. You you squandered the Super Bowl. All right, you squandered it. I don't care who was calling the offense. You're the head coach, and we was we just say fundamental foot dog. Right. You, you have to Run the, the damn team. ball. Listen, let let Devontae Freeman be the be the uh, Super Bowl MVP. Like if we keep the same thing with Seattle with Beast Mode. Let Beast Mode be the Super Bowl. MVP. Listen, when you start trying to pick who's the MVP is going to be because you favor the quarterback, all right, you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble. What are you about to say? No, I was agreeing with you. Oh, so um, the thing, though, too, that came out today is the fact that Arthur Blank was like, I don't know if Matt Ryan is going to be here for the foreseeable future. That depends on the next head coach. Mind you, Matt Ryan has, like, if they cut him after the season, they have $40 million of dead caps of money on there. Ooh. So that's not even happening. They have to be Man, I hope he hires somebody insane and the Bears can swoop in on that. It'll have to be after probably next year. But still, they're so bad, they're in the Trevor Lawrence Justin Fields lottery now. How about they hire Dabo Sweeney and he gets rid of Matt Ryan, just cuts him? How about that? I could not have Dabo in my NFL. Why? We could just hate Atlanta forever. Because Atlanta's a sweet place to be, right? I want to take you down there. Not that Falcons team. Come on. I'm not worried about the Falcons. I just don't – listen, I, I grew up watching Dion as a, a cornerback on the Falcons team as a young lad. And doing the Dirty Bird, all right, it, before Jamal Anderson I, was I in, had very was caught, fond memories of yeah, the Dirty Bird. Before Jamal Anderson was caught in the bathroom with the AO or Eugene Robinson was trying to mag down prostitutes who are undercover cops yeah. the night before the Super Bowl. I have an affinity for that. For the yes, Chris Chandler, yeah. my man, until he came to the Bears and showed me that man. Andre Bad Moon Rising. You know, like, so I don't want to just totally, I, as long as they're not decimating my team, I don't want to, I don't need to just poop on them. But also, I don't. I'm just trying to get Matt Ryan to the Bears. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah, but you're bringing in. <laughs> Cancer! Dude, do you understand? Boy, because look, I'm an SEC football guy living in Big Ten country, all right? I don't have too. to see a ton of ACC football, so I don't have to see a whole gaggle load of Dabble Sweeney interviews. You know what I mean? Dabble Sweeney interviews we have to see on NFL primetime and count that. Oh, but they'll be great. He'll be terrible. Oh, oh come on. Come That's good on. TV. No, no, no. Stay down there. I thank God they have Falcons hired me. <laughs> and if they ever open up that Chick-fil-A on Sunday, I will burn it to the ground. All right, all right. Man, I do need Chick-fil-A on Sunday. But, um, yeah, no, nah, dude. I'm Dabo Sweeney's Falcons, home. I don't want him anywhere around there. I don't know if I want Matt Ryan on the Bears either. So oh, come on. No, sir, I would take him over. I would definitely on take him. On the cheap, cheap? On, overtake him over Nick Foles in a heartbeat. Right. But he's – it's so, listen, I know that it's an upgrade, but when you've been abused and you're still going to get – like, okay, so – he just don't beat me up and leave me check in the house. He actually, like, take me around a little bit, but then we get home and beat me up some more. Uh, yeah. And I mean by that is using the, the turnovers. It's like we've been so turnover beaten at the quarterback position that it's like, dude, can I just get a guy that's like, dude, he threw, he threw 35 touchdowns and, like, seven picks. You know what I'm saying? Can I get one of those guys? I know. Here in my life? I'm just worried that the Bears are going to be too good to get Trey Lance now. But you, even if you look at it, though, Ryan, they would still have to have so much dead cap money if they made a trade that it doesn't seem feasible that they would sit there and do that. Because if you, if you oh yeah, they they're not going to get rid of Matt. So, yeah, I'm just you, praying. You, they asked Dabo uh, Sweeney somebody, to go. Somebody crazy. Maybe, maybe he would do something. And they were still like telling him, you got to wait a year. You better tell Trevor, sit back. Then I ain't coming from Clemson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so I know. I mean, you're right. Listen. Whoa, 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 whoa. What if they're like, yo, Dabo, we want you head coach, Trevor Lawrence. 
as that's your number one overall that's, pick. That's what I'm saying. They would have, to, and then we get Matt Ryan because the Bears could only get scraps. But like, <laughs> uh, listen, but they would have, they would tell him because uh, you still have McKay as the team president. That yeah, you have Trevor Lawrence here, and you have a contract for five or six seasons. But you're gonna have to wait a year before we move up on Matt Ryan because financially it's not feasible. That's hey, maybe doing. Arthur Blank's like, hey, Mick, Mick, okay, this right yeah, away. Okie dokie. Listen, it's like finally you realize that you overpaid Matt Ryan because of the work that uh, Julio Jones does. Maybe uh, Arthur Blank has a uh, Jerry Jones syndrome where he's getting so old and is so desperate to win that money is being thrown at the wall. No man, he's still the dude. They got. They got like six players making 18 mil and up or something like that on that team. Like it's a year annually. It's uh no, Dante Dante Fowler's making like 18 million dollars this season. Right? Like what? Because <laughs> <laughs> we need pass rush. Right? Like what? I know Big Beasley wasn't good, but damn, son. Like what? So, oh, the Bears almost had Vic Beasley too. Oh yeah, we would we would have been upset. Um, in the long run, but uh, even though he would have come up in Chicago and got in Chicago tough, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Like Same thing happened in Leonard Floyd, Floyd. <laughs> from Georgia. Uh, so, uh, yeah, dude. I, I mean, it's a very interesting day in Atlanta, uh, in a bad way. If you're if you're an Atlanta Falcons fan, man, you have to be upset because you're still caught between a rock and a hard place. You got all these contracts. Your team's playing terrible, and your quarterback's contract. Is uh it, 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 it is is hanging over your neck because you just can't get rid of him and move off of him and at least allow you to bring in have a cheap quarterback and bring in some perhaps some other players. Um, like they're 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 in a weird place for a team that probably thinks they need to do a rebuild sooner or later. Um, so uh, yeah, I, that's, that's, yeah, we'll take Matt Ryan. That's all. That's all we're saying. I would. Here. I would. I would we'll take. take him. But I know that we still be upset on Sunday. We still. Oh yeah. Dang, dang it! Damn it! Dang it! Damn it! Dang it! So. <laughs> It'll, just, maybe it'll be better than being upset in March when they pick up like uh, a wide receiver instead of Trey Lance, and then we man, lose that on a quarterback forever. Now listen, he has a strong arm, but we haven't seen uh, Matt Ryan playing outdoors twenty four seven. You know what I'm saying? No, Ooh, it's cold out here, right? Like he hasn't played outdoors a lot since college. Hey, he played those BC tough games, <laughs> Northeast. Uh, so let's go up for grass. What you got next? Uh, let's move on to the shocker of the day, the upset of upsets, I guess. Those Las Vegas Raiders went into Arrowhead in COVID, and beat the Chiefs 40-32. to 32. Pretty good stuff, I guess, for Johnny Grew. Listen, uh, Derek Carr, sometimes you forget how awesome that boy's arm is. Hey, I was saying, come to Chicago. Remember that last year? I would have I taken him. Um, you forget how awesome that kid's arm is, man. Some of those passes, Lord, have just the, 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 the hurling ability of that dude. Uh, listen, John Gruden's proven, it's proven that the, the thoughts of the NFL passing him by were premature to say the least. Uh, that he stayed abreast of what is taking place in the league and is ready to assimilate, accumulate, and throw down with these MFs. And uh, listen, they, we were looking at that team as far as moving off Derek Carr. You thought that Marcus Mariota, he still may, due to injury, get some time at QB because they didn't just bring him in to bring him in. You know what I'm saying? Like, they brought him in because they were thinking about now that Derek Carr doesn't have any guaranteed money and we can move off of him, we can have a guy that's here while, while Chucky goes out and picks his, his, his uh, quarterback in the future. You know what I'm saying? Because he's going to do that sooner or later with a 10-year contract. What is he? He's in the second year of a 10-year contract right now? Yeah, I yeah. think so. Eight, eight more years, including this season. Um, so he's going to get him a quarterback, right? You know, this actually might be year three. No, he can't. Chuck. He only had one year. Did he trade Khalil Mack the first year? Yeah, he traded Khalil Mack. Then that would be twenty. Yeah, so this is three. You're right. This is the third season. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. This is the third season. Um. So yeah. Wait, did he do that? Yeah, he did. Yeah. You're right. This is his third season. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Um. But yeah, he's he's out there doing it. Um. They got that for Wheeler. That phenomenal tight end that they have, man. Yeah, and and you got Jacobs. Just killing it. Like, Chuck is doing his dizzle, to say the least, in the Death Star, that, that stadium that they got out there in Vegas. And the thing is, and it's funny, um, football's the best sport to go to Vegas because you only got eight home games. 
And that's depending on if you play in Europe or not. Um, because you can bring in all the fans from the other teams to come yeah, in. Yeah, who doesn't want to just go to a football game while in Vegas? In Vegas. It's Vegas, right? So it's just. It's it, a party afterwards, it's a party before. Exactly. I mean, even if they played a night game, it'd be over by nine o'clock. On top of that, then you still got the two cities where the, the Raiders were before in, in Oakland and the Los Angeles and those fans making a trip, you know what I'm saying? Or even that, you know. It's three hours, I think. Yeah, from it's, from it's definitely from L.A. I've made that drive. It's three to four hours from – definitely from Oakland, it's going to be further. That's not uh, terrible. No, but, you know. Flight, so people in Illinois do that to go to Bears games, I'm sure. Yeah. So, I mean, dude, it's – but listen. He's doing his thing, and Derek Carr is showing why he got drafted where he got drafted at, or why he got paid the money that he received, I should say. Um, and, it, man, dude, hats off to him. I mean, you went, against the, you went up against the Chiefs, but see, the Chiefs, Chiefs are going through the motions, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're unfocused, and there's a such thing as a championship hangover, and you're seeing that in a game like that. And, I mean, the first two – you're seeing that in games that they play against their divisional rivals. That's what I should say. When they're playing, and that's one because they see them more often. But when they're playing divisional rivals, those people are those games are stepping up because I believe the first two games they played the season was against division rivals, wasn't it? So they played the Texans and the Chargers. So it was one, um, and they creamed the Texans basically. Um, but yeah, they played the Chargers. Listen, that Chargers game they won only by three points, twenty three to twenty. Oh yeah. So yeah. when they're when they're playing the, those teams that get a good look at them. Um, they gotta bring it, dog. You those are those are rivalry games, especially. Listen, they may not be rivals to you, but you've been bludgeoning their heads, right? <laughs> like, well, we might be underrating. You know who has gone back to back in the Super Bowl? It's been New England, and then before that, wasn't it just Denver with John Elway and the Broncos, okay. which was a totally Cow- different era of football? Cowboys, but not the Broncos Cowboys were after kinda- that. Yeah, I'm just saying the Cowboys were the same era. But I'm saying no, no. The last time that someone went back to back championship, no, it was just, just gone Super Bowl back to back. It's just been New England, right? Wait, didn't the, 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 the maybe Seattle? Seattle, Seattle did, and they, they lost, didn't they? That was the, the that yes. Was, so was it took goat coach and quarterback from New England to get there, and Russell Wilson's a top three quarterback of all time to get there. Like, you need a lot of things to go right, and he had an all-time defense to go along with Russell Wilson. You need a lot to go right to go back to the championship oh, it's, twice. It's totally, It's totally. so, so hard. We might be – because they signed everybody, and it was like, oh, look, everybody signed up. They're going to go to the next four. I didn't, that I didn't, is premature. I didn't believe that, and I'll say this. I think they're going to have to get away from this year before you can say they may – if this is if they stay healthy, to step into – what Bill Belichick and Tom Brady was doing because you kind of got to get over that the winning is fun part. And it's just like, this is what we do. This is the machine that we do. Cause that's why the reason that's why so many of those players don't like Bill Belichick. Cause he doesn't let them get too high. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm a, listen, I'm gonna tell you, you're still out here messing up. This is what we need to do. And depending on how much money you make, I may trade you or release you. So it's not that, that like, this is a family atmosphere or whatever. So And I think that benefits them when it comes to contending yearly. You know what I'm saying? Because you know you have to step up here. And I love Andy Reid, but he's, ne- he's never proven that he was that coach. And also, man, listen, I mean, he's baby goat, but he's having a lot of fun right now. So and his head has to be spinning, being on top of the world at this young age. Impact. Baby engaged on top of everything else. Yeah, and an MLB owner. Like, it's a lot – uh, it's a lot going on that I think he I think he just needs to mature and and that and him because it's it's on him in a way because he leads the team and how he and Andy Reid hold them accountable because like I said last week to you that's and that's a that's that's Patrick Mahomes team now like Andy Reid is just around Andy Reid is like if the Rams kept Dick Vermeil instead of moving off to go to Mike Marks like. He, Mike, Dick Vermeer would have been there, <laughs> but it would have still kind of been like Mike Mark's team slash Kurt Warner's team, but it, that's how it was. Cue the Dick Vermeer tears. Right? Cause, so, because if anybody doesn't remember, they basically signed Mike Marks to a head coaching con- – he, they signed him to he was going to take over for Dick Vermeer. That's what they signed him to. And Dick Vermeer was basically like, you know what? The writing's on the wall. 
I'm going to cab my ass down to Kansas City, right, where I can sit there and, and be a coach. Because, like, so what's Dick Real is basically just coaching the defense, basically, with no, with no say-so over the offense. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, that, that, that it, the, 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 I think in Kansas City, uh, that's going to be an issue. Hopefully that they solve it, that, that they get to the point where, you know, the, yeah, we enjoy them winning, but it's, it's regular and it's just what we do. Uh, you wanted to give a shout out to the new Pittsburgh Steelers weapon Chase, that made a statement. Chase, they said you was a tight end and you wasn't so fast, and you ran that forty that you run at the combine. Claypool, woo! Yeah, get you off of those waiver scraps. I can't believe nobody picked you up. Uh, listen, Chase Claypool and the resurgence of Ben Roethlisberger. All right, Big Ben is out there. Boom. That defense isn't what it should be. Uh, where's that Mika Fitzpatrick when you need him, right? Um, I believe defensive line is playing well, but the re- they're not stout like they were uh, last year. But uh, Chase, Chase Claypool came out and, what, set the rookie record for four touchdowns in one game? I mean, he's entering uh, uh, RIP the Kansas Comet, Gail Sarris territory with six TDs, even though he wasn't a rookie, uh, in one game against the 49ers, I believe. Uh, listen, that that boy, if he's like that, and you put Juju back where he should be as the number two, if he's the next DK Metcalf, I mean, that's basically what I'm saying. If he's that, man, Ben Roethlisberger ain't got to retire for three years at least. Like for, and, dude, all they need to go get is another running back. I'm not saying you can't use James Conner. Trade for Le'Veon. I was going to say they need to bring his ass back, um, especially how well he ran behind that line. Like, he knew. They, they, it was a synergy between his running style and that line as far as how he, he, he pauses and waits for a gap instead of just hitting a guy. And he made enough money, he could pay it back to them. You're right. He has. He has. Dude, listen, I will bring his ass back. Um, but still, uh, you know what I'm saying, that, 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 that defense, I mean, that team looks good. The defense needs to play like it played when Big Ben was out the season. And then they can probably knock off the Lamar Jacksons of Baltimore Ravens. Of the Ravens. Mm. That would be – you don't think uh, the Steelers had the advantage between the Ravens and them right now? It looks like it, but I don't know if Baltimore has really started to get into a, a, a real good uh, lather, to say the least. Um, Baltimore has the better defense right now, I believe. Baltimore has the better running game. Uh, the real problem is if Pittsburgh gets up on Baltimore, like then y'all in some trouble. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but the, Yeah, if it turns into an air duel between Big Ben and Lamar, forget it. Yeah, if you, you're in some trouble. But, yeah, I, I, I have I, – I may have the, the, the Steelers slightly above Baltimore right now. Yeah, I think I would too. Uh, how about that Monday night thriller? Chargers, Saints, 30-27. to 27. Saints get by. But Justin Herbert, he's looking pretty – Pretty good. So whoever Justin Herbert's cousin was that took out Tyrod Taylor, still shame on you. Uh, hope your cousin has a large sum of cash for you with the setup move. You stick that needle through that lung. <laughs> through it. So um, listen, that kid's out there balling. I mean, we knew he was athletic. We knew he had the tools at Oregon. One, it was a fear of not playing behind the center 24-7. Uh, and also not being playing Pac-12, playing Pac-12, not being a guy that you felt that could could ri- he wasn't the rising tides raises all ships guy at quarterback. Right, like, he's Mister Athletic, but not right. but not like between the ears. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And man, he is balling out to be someone who clearly didn't get a lot of reps in in, in, in training camp because he wasn't going to be the starter. And he's in the pros. Listen, I've thought about it as. Is he one of those cats that's like, you know, you better off in the pros than in, in college? Because, and it also is because he's in the Pac-12 uh, that we didn't get enough eyes on him, but he had a, a whole bunch of national games. But to see how he, that boy is running and gunning, all right? And John Elway went and scouted him, too. He might be panicking a little bit. You think Miami's sweating that yes. decision? I thought about that. I, I definitely thought, like, boy. Listen, I was watching that game like, boy, Tua better ball out when he starts <laughs> Because I'm like, dude, these QBs out here, like, when you sit there and listen, Burrow isn't winning, but Burrow looks like a, he is slinging. 
he looks like a really good quarterback on a really bad team. That's what Burrow right. looks like. You see, you can still. It looks like a quarterback with no offensive line if you just totally, totally. Photoshop you, the offensive listen, line right before the snap. For Burrow, for, 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 for um, Joe Burrow to have basically a few games uh, with that passing coordinator and then a whole season at LSU and it was to start showing who he could be. And you thought, well, with that one year, basically, he, this may not truly be him. He's showing, no, this is who he is. So getting back to Tua, I was thinking of the, the, about Burrow and a Herbert, and I was like, boy, Tua, by, by whatever, he better show his ass off whenever he gets to start. And listen, it may be better, and it's probably not. I'm, I'm being facetious. It may be better to sit there and let the Magic Man stay out there for a little while and let these other cats look calm down, just to Herbert at least, calm down before you, you throw Tua out there. Uh, but How does uh, taking for Tua work if two of the other quarterbacks are the best quarterbacks in the class? And one of them he got drafted ahead of, right? Like, but again, you know what? Two, if these guys can do it, Tua can do it too. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll say, like, it, 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 real time. It, the trade, the transition is definitely real time. The transition <laughs> from college to the pros is a lot simpler with uh, one, some of these teams use a pro style offense, but a lot of these teams use the spread style off or aspects of the spread style offense uh, in the pros now. You know what I'm saying? So it's the transition is a lot easier for air raid guys or for, you know what I'm saying, for the guys at, at Oregon, you know, than it used to be back in the, in the past uh, for them. To, that's when they was usually just coming and playing pro style systems. So, uh, yeah, I, I think Tua is still going to be good. But he did cross my mind watching uh, Justin Herbert. I was like, boy, Tua, you, don't you F this up. <laughs> God is depending on you. Uh, All right, what else you got up for grabs? Well, I'm going to do a quick pivot to basketball. We had a finals champion. We got to discuss LeBron and the Lakers. What are your thoughts of the first ever bubble championship and LeBron's fourth? Oh, congratulations. Um, and winning it brings more legitimacy to if anybody outside of the Clippers probably won it. Um, then it would if, if any other team won it, people would have been like, yeah, that's that's the asterisk. I still see people saying it's the asterisk. Um, I kind of get that, but LeBron was probably number one A or A B as far as who was gonna win the title. You know who gets the asterisks is the Clippers for being a joke and not getting to that Western Conference Finals. Yeah, but you know what? They would have lost. Um, they they would have lost probably. Them. They didn't. They weren't sharp. They weren't sharp. And all those they never they never jailed and homogenized. You know what I'm saying? It never became one unit from the old Clippers and the two stars that they brought in this offseason. So it wasn't about the trophy; it was about the wings. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, LeBron, listen, rightfully so, um, he won the title. He got his fourth title. I'm happy for him to get his fourth title. Um, he busts his ass. It is, listen, he's not cheating us. You know what I'm saying? Like, only thing he got to get, he always is making sure he has a great player alongside of him. But LeBron James ain't cheating nobody. He's a great ambassador for basketball. Uh, physically, at his age, he's one of the greatest old players ever. Uh, oh, yeah. He's one of the greatest players ever. I'm not saying that, but good yeah. gracious. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's for him. Yeah, talk about twilights of careers. He yeah. is killing us. It's crazy. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, uh, hats off to that team. Hats off to Anthony Davis, Chicago boy, uh, getting getting off the snide and getting him a ring, and now he's a championship player. You can say whatever, but guess what? He's a championship player. Uh, 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 Ray John Rondo, former Bull. And at Kentucky too, right? Champion mm -hmm. in college and the pros, and he was a one and dunner. Yep. Ray John, him and uh, Mike get, get Kierkegaard. Um, Ray John Rondo becoming the second player to win a championship with the Celtics and the Lakers. Um, he had 19 points that last game. He's been he's been balling. I think if if I think anybody that's had Rajon Rondo in their city, maybe outside of Dallas, um, I think you have an affinity for him. If you kind of yeah, him. does he have to come to the Bulls and win one here so he can I, do East Coast, West Coast, Midwest? I would like for one day Rajon Rondo to be my head coach of my Chicago Bulls because I think he's going to be mm -hmm. head coach. Um, but what he was doing with the Windy City Bulls players and or when, when players got were, were bouncing back and forth, the young players went from the Windy City Bulls to the Bulls roster, he would go down there and watch the play. Just, and all the stuff he did in the community, he's a real quality individual. You know what I'm saying? Maybe slightly cantankerous because of his intelligence, but he's a quality dude. And he's cantankerous because he's just so smart, as I just implied. Uh, so I wouldn't mind him being my head coach uh, especially just gaining some wisdom as far as being a people's person. But I think he has a chance to be. Watch your ass, Billy. 
He has Watch a your to, ass. I think he has a chance to be a great NBA head coach, man. I mean, great uh, NBA head coach, period. What about you? What did you think about the other uh, uh yeah, I, it's hats off to LeBron. I feel, you know, it's a good. It just stinks that uh, you know there isn't that clash at the end, and you know it might not even work out in baseball the same way, and you don't get that automatically in sports. It just it's the best when you can have that ultimate team from the East and ultimate team from the West clash, and you would think a sport of basketball probably would have the easiest chance to do that because it's the most predictable if you will but hats off to LeBron nothing to take away from him and you know the Heat played well they just didn't have the guys didn't have the horses to keep up see, with the Lakers so one thing in the Senate I, I, I see it and it's funny having a show where things we talk about and then a week later four days later you start seeing people talk about it. so we talked last week and I mentioned uh, about how attractive that Miami team was going to be to another superstar we talked about. Oh, yeah. It's popped up on our text thread like five days later. I want to be like, you know, we talked about that on the show. But I was like, damn, yeah. don't be like that, right? Uh, you start hearing people now saying, like, you know, how easy it's going to be. And I'm not saying, like, you know, I'm being Nostradamus or whatever, but I'm just saying we was early to point that out. Like, yeah, it's, you, the door is open now, especially in a way it helps them by not winning it, because at least the, the player that comes down there can say, I didn't just ban wagon jump. They needed me to actually accomplish this right. as far as winning the championship. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just who's going to be available. But, yeah, man, if they can stay healthy um, and they can add a, a, a superstar to go uh, – actually, they need to add a superstar to be better than everybody on their team. Or, he, 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 no, he has to be better. He has to be – Jimmy. it could be Jimmy's team. They need somebody who can score at will will. Yeah, that's that's what's interesting for them. If they get a scorer and just let Jimmy be the guy that does whatever until it's Jimmy time, that that's really the piece that they're missing. They need that score that can't be stopped. You know, get them buckets. Would, you know who I would I would uh, okay, I would love to see. I'm gonna give you three players, and two of them have been mentioned or t- attached to uh, to that team in the past. One KD, um, but I think KD is going to definitely stay with the Nets. Uh, so I wouldn't mind seeing KD in there, especially how efficient KD is. He would he would be wonderful on that team because it's not yeah. – he needs a ton of shots to get 25 up real quick. Uh, two, Giannis, who's been attached to that team because since they got guys that can shoot, you, it's not – and you got Jimmy. So you you can try that, putting up a wall against Giannis, but they got other guys. There. Yeah, it's good luck with that. Milwaukee, yeah, and a culture – better than Milwaukee. But you know who I really would like to see with that team? And I don't know what they would have to trade. Like, they may have to give up Bam to get him, so that would be terrible. I would love to see James Harden on that team. Ooh. I would love to see. I thought you were going to say a Dame Lillard over there. No, no. I would love to see. That would be cool, but no. No, James, is he's a good I would, idea. I would look. Plays better defense than giving props for. Not to say in the past he wasn't an Ole guy. Was playing. And there would be no burden on him to play right. defense. Right. Dude, and you, what are you going to do against – if he's on that squad, what are you going to do? And they got to – With his ability to pass, dribble, drive. Right, luck. dude. They got to get a back – they got to get a backup big. They, I mean, and not, not just anybody, like a legit – Backup, they need a Lopez boy down there. Or something they need a backup big. Yeah, they need a low rent Bam. Yeah, the backup Bam. Right, right. You know what I'm saying. So they def they definitely need size uh, going up against those Western Conference teams if they make it to the to the to the uh, finals again. But yeah, I would love to see James Harden play for that team. But again, shout out to the Lakers. Uh, shout out to Rob Palenka. Uh, shout out to Jimmy Buss and that whole organization. I guess the best thing is just that. You know, it's there's going to be a memoriam to Kobe out of this. That's yeah. that's really the the top thing for me to take away from this Lakers. If anything, it kind of sucks because he's not there to see it happen mm-hmm. either. But that's you know that, thing. but you know that Kobe, like if he was there, I mean, he'd be just he'd be losing. He'd probably be courtside like Drake. Yeah, he'd oh. just be all Lakers. Even worse, when and I hate to say worse, part of the reason that he'd be losing is because Gigi would be so happy because that's what brought him back to basketball. And she didn't get to experience it. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. nothing like being a little kid, man. Your team won the titles. I know. It's the best. It's nothing, it's nothing like it. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the somber part of it all. 
Uh, but you know what? Shout out to the NBA for bringing sports back and proving that they they found a way to do it without anybody getting sick and haven't missing any games inside of the bubble. Yeah. NFL's talking about playoff bubble now themselves. They better playoff bubble if you really talk about winning. Listen, I mean, it's hard for me to ask these these men on what they need to do when it comes to them and their families. Um, but if you want your leagues to probably be financially viable for the next year, year and a half, this is what you're going to have to do. I mean, that's just the truth of the matter. If you want most of the money y'all can get your hands on, you're going to have to figure out some way, man, because look at these football teams, especially – I don't know why the NFL didn't build, build – they should have gave three – they should have put in three extra weeks because you knew this was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know it would have been messed up, and they'd be like, the season is this long, and we got COVID? But you had to do something because – this is going to happen more. No, we're not even in flu season yet, right? You're going to – listen, it's going to get crazy, uh, even though they got high-fangled high, high tests, so we'll definitely see. But, uh, yeah, again, uh, that was definitely um, – it was a good little bubble. It was some good bubble basketball. For all the haters of the bubble, I had a lot of wild moments yeah. in the bubble. Take that bubble and stick it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, definitely uh, we're back with another flip. We had a really fun flip this past weekend. So definitely continue to look out for Ryan, Sid, and myself. Uh, we're going to start bringing some uh, some old favorites and guests uh, back on the flip to ha- have some fun with us. Uh, maybe not this week, but the weekend after, uh, kind of keeping the same vibe going, uh, laughing, joyous, uh, with a little bit of tidbits of information and maybe some things that you didn't hear in a news cycle uh, to pique your interest. But definitely continue to support that. Uh, Ryan, uh, myself, uh, definitely appreciate it. And please take care. <laughs>